Good morning again. Uh, we're so thankful you could join us here for our lesson study on motivation and preparation for mission. Um, again, last week we, we kind of just talked and touched on excuses and the story of Jonah. And here we are now past that, past looking beyond that. Yes, we're going to do mission now. Okay, what's the motivation behind it? And how do we motivate and prepare mm. for the task at hand? That's right. That's an okay. important question. Okay, so before we get into it, can you pray for us? I'll be yeah. glad to. <laughs> Let's That's pray right. before we get into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to study your word. And we recognize that the only way we can understand it is if your Holy Spirit opens our eyes and minds so that we can look at the beautiful things you have written for the benefit of your children. And so again, we thank you, and we ask your blessing upon all those watching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, so right out the door, we got Luke 24, mm -hmm. verse 44. And it yes. says, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this week we are really focusing, especially at least in the first part of this lesson, on Luke 24. Correct. And I feel like verse 44 was a little bit of a spoiler alert. Yes. But... <laughs> Let's uh, let's first uh, go back to the beginning. So, okay. do you want to start in verse one? Let's do that. So, I'm just kind of read every sure. other verse. Uh, okay. We're going to do one through twelve here. So, bear with us. So now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Amen. So we're going to jump back into Luke uh, 24 in a second, mm -hmm. but what do you get from this, Pastor? Well, this was a very difficult time for the church, especially for the apostles. A lot um, of unknowns. A lot of unknowns and just, again, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Their mm -hmm. teacher, their rabbi, their Lord had been crucified. And they had all basically abandoned him. And they had basically, in the case of Peter here, he had even denied him. Yeah. But we see again a group of people who go back to studying God's word and trying to do the best they can. And God reveals to them something amazing, something that Jesus had talked about many, many times, but for some reason they had not paid attention. Yeah. And um, 
it's just interesting to get in the mood. You, you mm -hmm. see like this super early morning mission mm -hmm. to accomplish what was not quite completed on Friday. Correct. So there's anticipation, but there's also the sadness. Mm -hmm. Like here we ha now we have to go revisit the body. Mm -hmm. We started putting spices or whatever, but mm -hmm. it just, Sabbath was coming, so we had to rest, Correct. just take a break. And then that's a burden they had to carry through the whole Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But, you know, very early in the morning, they're, they're coming in, bringing loads of spices, just ready to do the most beautiful send off. Mm -hmm. Like it, pouring out their hearts, a labor of love. Amen. Basically. Um, Amen. And it's shocking because didn't we shut the tomb? Wasn't there's a rock over there that was, was this, rolled over yeah, the, the, and the like, entrance. Um, there's this perplexity in verse four. You can just feel. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's two individuals who aren't just normal individuals. They're glowing individuals. That's right. And, I um, like that picture. The, the beautiful part of this, I mean, there's so many gorgeous sections, but the, the, the statement, why do you seek the living among, among the, the dead? dead. Hmm. He's not here, but he's he risen. Amen. And so that ends up being the first gospel message mm -hmm. that is taken back. Mm -hmm. And I think Pastor and I were just talking about this. It wasn't even the apostles that were the first mm -hmm. to discover. It was the support staff. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they, <laughs> they may not have been on the... There was, there was already um, tensions of who wants to be the greatest among the disciples, let alone this other group of individuals. Um, but in spite of the fact he had passed away, they were still holding on to that memory. They were. <laughs> They were, and, and, and what's beautiful, again, as you mentioned, these, these two beings, we would call them angels, um, they invite these individuals who have come to the tomb to remember what he had said. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think this is, this is, again, beautiful that in, in all these difficult situations, we are encouraged to remember the words pronounced by Jesus, mm. the words pronounced by God, and these words encourage us in those moments. And I feel like that's an aspect of missions as well. That is. Because sometimes you're reaching people who may have been in the church. Mm -hmm. You're reaching people that are close to the church, but maybe they don't have the right concept. Um, it's not just Samaria and, mm -hmm. and the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. There's that local aspect too. And here's um, these individuals take back that message of remembrance. I like that. That's the verse you read, number eight here that says, and they remembered his words. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, something that but they had to be reminded they had to be reminded correct so <laughs> it's funny what when when we're going through difficult moments we tend to forget the important things they were so focused on what's just happened and, and not that what just happened is not important but in this case the two beings are basically saying yeah the tomb is empty because it's supposed to be empty mm. It's, it's not just a coincidence. It's not just a, um, an accident that happened here. Remember the words, and then they remembered. Mm -hmm. That's true. Jesus told us about this. Yeah. So at that point, they, they run back. And of course, as non-apostles, they they get that, oh, we don't believe you. Mm -hmm. No, surely not. And so they had to go see for themselves. But 
I don't want you to take away the negative aspect. Mm -hmm. I, what I want you to take away from this is look at it in the context of studying for themselves. Mm. Beautiful. Um, they were brought the truth mm -hmm. and then they had to go see for themselves. Um, and I think when we reach out to people, um, they can listen to everything we have to say, mm -hmm. but until they have that experience for themselves, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to trigger mm -hmm. it for them. Mm -hmm. And so it's just one of those things keep reaching, keep sharing the good news, but even devout people are going to have to come to the conclusion themselves. That's right. I like that point. And, and, and it tells us here then that Peter was one of those who rose from where he was sitting and ran to the tomb and even stooped down and he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And he departed marveling to himself at what had happened. Mm -hmm. So he's like, it's true. What they're saying is true. There's nobody here in the tomb. It's empty. And, and that, as you mentioned, was the gospel right there. Yeah. The tomb is empty. So I'm going to cut over to another verse now. Okay. And then we're going to come back. Sure. But this is Philippians 1. Mm -hmm. So in Philippians 1, uh, 15 through 18, it says, Some indeed preach Christ, even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. Mm -hmm. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, mm -hmm. not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my change, but mm -hmm. the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. Hmm. And in this I rejoice, yes, and I will rejoice. Amen. Okay, so why is the lesson pull this out early? It, it mm -hmm. starts into um, Luke 24, but it also brings this verse into context right in here. Mm -hmm. And I think that basically we find maybe examples throughout history of people who preach Jesus, but for selfish motives. Okay. Yes. And then you have those who preach Jesus out of love and faith and wanting to give God the glory for what he had done. And Paul basically tells us, regardless, Jesus is still being preached. And for him, that's something like powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe, maybe more so to him that he was at one point persecuting Christians and trying to keep this message from being spread out to the entire world. And he's just saying, this message is unstoppable. Yeah. It's going to get to the whole world one way or another. And what are we going to do about it? Probably that's the question. Yeah. Well, and I look, I look at this verse and why it's here mm -hmm. is there's also, I don't know if you've had somebody share bad news with you mm. or news isn't great and then you have this urge to be like call somebody else and be like hey did you mm -hmm. hear such and such and hey mm -hmm. did you hear such and yeah, such a... and is it because we're asking because we want to be first in the know mm. and that's an example of selfish ambition mm. Uh, did you hear about the car accident on such and such? And you know all the details about it. And everybody wants to know why there was traffic for three mm. hours. And you drove past it and you saw the f the truck that was flipped mm -hmm. on its side. But you were stuck in hour for two hours in traffic. But everybody else was back there and they never saw it. And so you're sharing all the information. And that's like for your gain because you were part of the process mm -hmm. and knowing in the know. Um, and that can happen with elections that can happen yeah. with all different things and it's it's that weird way of sharing information mm. um <laughs> clearly not out of love it's just mm -hmm. so that people know that i'm in the know mm -hmm. and i think that's one example mm -hmm. of this how this selfish ambition okay. could be 
But what does it mean, supposing to add affliction to my chains? Maybe, maybe in, that, <coughs> in the sense that these were people who maybe, again, um, were not part of the body, were doing it for different reasons. Yeah. And I think as, as, as a minister of the gospel, you're always concerned with what is being said, you know? And, yeah. and, and I think that when, when we have, when we know of people who, who go off the deep end and, and start something different, we, we, we suffer. It adds a burden. It adds a burden. Yeah. And we go, why? Why would you do that? You know, it's not helping, it's mm -hmm. hurting. So instead of from envy and strife, goodwill. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the women coming back from the, the tomb yes. were sharing in goodwill. And just mm -hmm. the joy I can you, the feel, um, how excited you know, Mary was to see Jesus. Yes. And he just had to be like, hold on, <laughs> no hugs yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got to ascend to my father That's right. um, and your father. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like joy mm -hmm. can also, um, and now I'm going to use the example of good news. Mm -hmm. When you hear some super good news, it's hard not to share it with That's everybody. Right. Um, even if it's like, uh, you guys, the pasta's on sale at mm. Wegmans, <laughs> you know, or so, something. Run. It's like you can get like four boxes Excited. for four dollars or something. Yes. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not really a coupon or anything like that. But when you have some really good news and, you know, hey, there's, you can't there, help there's free it. apples in the lobby. Uh -huh. Someone's uh, brought some. So everyone's going down to get the apples. You know, it's that um, is more of the not out of envy. It's just like, guys, there's free apples. So there's the excitement. So you just kind of have to have to see how human nature can mm -hmm. work. It, it, can, it can go for selfish reasons, but mm -hmm. it can also go because you're so excited about something. And you wanna share. And, and I think that is the important aspect of this mm -hmm. in that when we see uh, motivation and preparation for mission, what is our motivation for mission? Mm -hmm. And how do we give those truths away mm. as people who have been given this mission? And I like what, what the lesson points out regarding the, the women and also Peter later on, is this aspect of experience. Mm. So they experience something and then they share their experience with someone else. And, and I think this is, this is powerful because people want to see what God is doing in our life before they probably even start taking steps in that direction. And, and that's what we can share, what God is doing. You know, and one thing this lesson mm -hmm. didn't really touch on, I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but Road to Emmaus, it really didn't pull that story into here. Mm -hmm. But that was just another element where you have... Um, with the road to Emmaus, Emmaus story, mm -hmm. you have Jesus walking with these individuals, ending up at uh, their house, and then instead of uh, basically, he prays for the food and is gone. And vanishes. And then they ran all that way they came That's right. to go tell the disciples. So it, there, there's the as just early examples right after Jesus. Uh, passed away, you have these super early examples of people when they've experienced that risen Christ. And maybe we could look at the story because it's okay. right there in Luke 24. Okay, so basically verse 13 through uh -huh. 35 is that Emmaus story. Correct. But um, what I think is cool about that is Jesus himself is the one doing the evangelism right Amen. here. Amen. He's, he's giving this Bible study. Mm -hmm. And I wish this part were included in the, in the yes. lesson because he asked them so many thoughtful questions mm -hmm. as only Jesus could, you know, and just 
and, and what's, what's beautiful. this conversation you guys are having? You know, so uh -huh. so diving into their current event, whatever current. their current life event is. And they're like, you haven't heard? <laughs> <laughs> it was on the... <laughs> it's like on, on the all Jerusalem the Times major, or whatever. Exactly. Um, and but, what's beautiful then is Jesus jumps in and, and yeah. starts explaining to them, whoa, haven't you read? Mm -hmm. It's from Genesis on. Yeah. Starts talking about the things that were to happen or were supposed to happen to the Messiah. Yeah, and then, you know, yeah, the, the funny thing is they also had the story of them, the women. So they had, um, they heard something, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they, they did. They mentioned that. Yeah. They had heard about some who had gone to the tomb. Yeah, so like the, the, the rumors are already spreading. They are spreading. Which also is, mm. is good news because mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about the concept of the latter rain, mm -hmm. when the gospel really gets going. Amen. Um, it's going to spread. Look at the world as a very, very dry place. Yes. You light a match, you start a fire. So that literally is the case in certain west Parts, west coasts yeah. and i think tennessee my yes. my family is talking about how dry it is right now down oh, there wow. but like if you look at the the world as a spiritually dry place and it, at some point that that match is going to fall to the ground gonna and it's it going to take off and it's going to go so quickly so here you know they're having the the rumors and they're they're kind of re regurgitating some of mm -hmm basically regurgitating the regurgitated mm -hmm. so like, they're sharing they're, they're, what they've this heard this is what we've heard uh -huh. we're, we're, but they're still pretty sad uh -huh. and he just kind of goes through what the prophets have said mm -hmm. and just kind of points back which is later what you see the disciples doing like philip mm -hmm. you know he he's like oh this is what you're reading okay well let me paint you this picture mm -hmm. and then there's a baptism right at the Beautiful. end of that you know, that's all in a day's event. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And maybe there's a lesson here. Reach people where they're at. Yeah. And, 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 and start there. Don't, don't start where you are at, which yeah. is probably not where they're going to be able to understand what you're trying to share. But that, that's exactly what Jesus did and, and what then um, the, the Apostle Philippi, or Philip, um, yeah. also did with, this eunuch. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, in a heartbeat, Jesus is back with the other disciples now. Yes. Um, and uh, so as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be to you. Amen. So, <laughs> That's it. So, now he's there. It's like, it's so, true. It's real. Yeah. Um, he's risen. And of course, they're all happy, right? Yeah. No, they're shocked. And scared, it, uh, terrified. It says. It's another one of those situations mm -hmm. where there's, they were out in the boat and they're during the storm and they saw Jesus and it was like a ghost. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of back to... To that this, same experience. Yeah. But he, he just is like, okay, here's the physical me. Touch, mm -hmm. see. Uh, for a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones mm -hmm. like I have here. And, yeah. and I, I'm glad that Jesus is not afraid to show us. Mm -hmm. It's not just tell us, but show us. Here, go for it. Here's the practical. Here's the practical. I'm real. Touch me. He's like, oh, by the way, do you have anything else to eat? <laughs> so while he's showing, because that's another thing. Yeah, that's another that's physical the, thing. That is. And he's like, okay, I'm hungry, <laughs> by mm -hmm. the way. And so they gave a piece of uh, broiled fish, and he took and ate before them. You know, so mm. like... As they're looking, and then he asks for the fish. It's just the, the amazing way he... Just brings it down kind, to it. Yes. Kindly shows everybody. Uh -huh. And then um, th that's where the memory text comes in, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I see Jesus again make, making himself at home with his yeah. disciples again. Hey. And, and just sharing. Now crossing his leg the way he typically does, Crow, grabbing the boiled yes. fish, eating it. Yeah. And so. they're like, can't believe their <laughs> you eyes. want some? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then verse 48, you are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you Amen. and stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high power Amen. on high. Okay. Yes. This is where the lesson transitions a little bit Yes. because, um, he's like, hang tight. You'll know when you know. Yes. 
and 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 before we 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 get there too yeah the, there's a really good question at the end of the okay of this, and, and I all thought, right so hang in there, there this is hang like, in here at the city uh, we're gonna and, 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 and so, before the power drops so the question is how well grounded are you in the prophecies that point to christ both hmm. his first and second comings and then especially in the last days why must we be grounded in the word of god including the prophecies and why is understanding them so crucial especially for mission so just an observation yes even the disciples who had physically been with jesus correct forgot they or forgot they didn't, they, see. they didn't see it they didn't remember so just mm -hmm. keep that in mind as you're in your walk um, two things. Um, don't ever feel like you've arrived. Amen. That's important. <laughs> and number two, if you are in a bad place and you realize that you have lost that light, um, Jesus can give that back. Amen. Because he was there or his assistants the mm -hmm. two like the two angels i don't know if the same guys were the ones who later were like Maybe. That's <laughs> yeah true. this same jesus who went into heaven uh -huh. he's going to come back in like matter okay we've done our two tasks and so now let's go back to heaven but um basically they were there uh, whether it was jesus or his assistants mm -hmm. um they were there to just drop gentle reminders amen and so if you have that connection, that, and you keep that, that open phone line, um, side note on open phone lines, uh, I was working on a project recently in Arlington, uh, California, Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Arlington, I think it was, mm -hmm. yeah. And there is an emergency call center, and we were kind of going over, there was a congressional ball game at some point mm -hmm. uh, with a shooting, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so, they were just talking about how they mobilized through that emergency thing. Oh, and we wow. were doing some interviews and stuff like that with the chief and, and everything like that. As we were walking out, um, there was this bright red phone in the corner and it wow. said something president of the United States or something. I was like, mm. what is it? He's like, yeah, that's an open phone line. If there's like a natural disaster or something, governors, president, everybody could just pick up and it could be like, oh, mm, uh, uh, and so I think about this. Uh, keeping that open connection with mm, God. Amen. Because at, at some point, it's going to, like, all the other lines of communication are going to seem down. Mm -hmm. And to have that open connection with God, you can still walk with Him, and He can, he can bring you full circle. Amen. And um, I, I like that because through prayer, we can connect with Jesus, with God. Um, but through the study of His Word, He gets to talk to us yeah and, and I think a lot of times we miss out on that beautiful opportunity I'm glad you're joining us today yeah. to study God's yeah. word but but it's something that doesn't happen too often and and we're invited to study and understand what God has said in his word so that we will not be deceived and if you have any questions mm -hmm. or if you're struggling with something mm -hmm. just feel free to reach out to pastor at tradelphiachurch.org uh, we can either hook you up with prayer mm -hmm. or Bible studies or just be there to answer your questions. Amen. It can be a simple question. Mm -hmm. No question is a dumb question. Mm -hmm. Just feel free to email that. Mm -hmm. uh, back to this question, how do you see this? How well are you grounded in the prophecies that point to mm -hmm. Christ for both his first and second coming? Mm -hmm. And how do you see it being grounded in the word of God? Mm -hmm. And, and I think for this, you personally, for me like, personally, I, I think it's 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 basic. It's 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 again what Jesus reminds his disciples to do when they see these things happening. And we're seeing a lot of things happening now. Instead of going to the news, instead of going to a friend or even a pastor asking them what they think is happening, go to the Word of God. Yeah. And and find out for yourself. Yeah. I think that's more important than what anyone else can say right now. And, and it's an invitation that God makes to you personally and makes it to me to take time to read his word and, and, and find out what he has said about these things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Acts.
one. Yes. Four to eight. Can we go there now? Let's go there. All right. So basically, it says, "I'm being assembled together with uh -huh. them." He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Amen. Which he said, "You have heard from me." Yes. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days mm -hmm. from now. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, "Lord." Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. Then what happens with Jesus? So as <laughs> he's speaking to them, yep, they watch, and he go. was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He ascends mm -hmm. to heaven. Yeah. And then kind of Peter t takes the helm. And Peter takes the helm right away. Like, it, was, it wasn't like mm -hmm. a me first thing. I think nope. it was just naturally, Natural. maybe they were all just getting together, and, just, mm -hmm. and it just came to him, which it also came to him later, you know, is expounding. And we'll get to that in a second. I know we don't have to, a lot of time here, but, um, you know, verse 16. Could you read Acts 1? Let's see, just, uh, just read a, f a few verses and to get the, the basic gist of this. Sorry, okay, verse so, in, so verse 16, Men and brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Hmm. So, so that, he, that's another <laughs> difficult thing. Yes. I think it was something that needed to be addressed. Yeah. Well, what happened here? It's kind of the elephant in the room. Correct. One of us betrayed we, the, we, the, the Messiah. We know exactly what happened, and mm -hmm. it goes into the details, and we'll skip the details. You mm -hmm. can see there in verse 18 to 19, but do you want to continue verse 20? Sure, for it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So basically, they, they fill a spot. They fill a spot. And, and, and they fill a spot with someone who has also been a witness yeah. to what's happened. And I think eventually there's also going to be a fallout. There is. And those spots will be filled. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things where you don't want to look to humans and human power because mm, some people that you are looking to mm -hmm. will be lights that went out. The disciples looked to Judas because mm -hmm. he seemed to have his head on straight and mm -hmm. he knew how to run the show. money mm -hmm. and a bunch of things that, you know, maybe he was one of the more educated ones mm -hmm. of the group. Mm -hmm. And so... There was that mutual respect. Well, they thought there was, and then there was a, a loss of trust. And mm. it was probably a very discouraging thing, a surprising thing. Literally, there's a, just a lot to process mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. And I, I think that can happen in the future as well. But they didn't let a hiccup like that stopped them from the mission and what they were going to do. And I'm glad that, that what they, what Luke reveals to us here in, in Acts chapter 1 and then later on in chapter 2 is that they recognize that to fulfill this mission they would need power from above. Mm. And so they took that to heart and what they started to do was something so important and yet so many times we neglect prayer and Bible study. And that's what they did. They, they, yeah. they came together. They, they looked at what was needed to fulfill this mission. And, and basically they asked. They asked God to inspire them and, and to 
fill them with wisdom and strength and courage in order to fulfill the mission together. Yeah. And, and I like that. I, that that's powerful. So just continuing on, because they, they knew they were supposed to kind of stick around the area. Correct. Until a certain like, point. Yes. And, and, you know, it's emphasized both in Luke and in Acts. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of just be here in Jerusalem for a bit and you, you'll know when. But the, there's that aspect now that our, our church, world church here has and are waiting for the Holy Spirit to be poured out as well. And, and, and I think that the lesson is trying to point out this really important um, concept that sometimes we are, or most of the time, we are more effective when we wait mm -hmm. versus just whoosh, run out because we've got the news. He's risen. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's just tell everybody. Yeah. And Jesus says, no, wait. Yeah. And they it's waited. Like a little tearing time. Yeah, it's a little tearing time in order to be ready to mm. share good news. Hmm. I like how Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says. Okay. Let's be used in a situation like this. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Amen. Not forsaking the assembling of mm. ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Okay, so uh, we're not going to have time to read the entire okay. chapter of... Acts 2, yes. but this is the day. <laughs> this is the day when it happens. Yeah. The awaited promise. So what's going on here? Um, Again, it's, it's actually, that was a holiday. You know, It's Pentecost, the correct? Pentecost. So what do they do at Pentecost? So typically? Pentecost, it's basically 50 days after they leave Egypt and they arrive to Mount Sinai and they receive the Ten Commandments. So that's what they're okay. celebrating. Okay. At that moment, the reception of God's word, the Torah, as they call it. Which is really interesting because yes. you have that, that aspect of the Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Amen. Kind of that nice reflection there. And, and, and again, it's, like it's centered around God's word again and, and, and receiving and it. And what happened when uh -huh. the day of Pentecost had fully come? And, and what happened? They were what? <laughs> they were united. They were together. They were praying. They were studying God's word. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that's another aspect of, of studying. Don't study by yourself. Mm. Study with someone else. Um, you might learn something. They might learn something. But more importantly is this uh, aspect of bonding mm -hmm. yeah, that happens. And, and we have this beautiful privilege of studying together. So they were just doing what they were told at this Correct. point, and they're they're all together in unity, mm -hmm. and boom, this rushing wind fills the whole house they're sitting. Uh, these little tongues of fire are coming down. There's an earthquake. Yeah, it's, everyone's filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and they begin to speak in all these other languages. Amen. Whatever they gave the utterance, and so basically. Since there's a lot of people from various areas, yes. uh, of course the, um, the the Jews there could understand them. But then there there's people from like Medes were in the area. Correct. Uh, uh, Parthians were in the area. And the Elamites and all of them were hearing somebody say mm -hmm. the message, mm -hmm. and I think that's just really cool. You know. I can do Duolingo or buy a course on some language I don't know, Cambodian, for instance, or whatever. Um, let's pick a let's pick a cool language like uh, what's that amazing clicking language? Yeah, it's Kosi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, so like mm -hmm. it would take a while for either one of us to learn Language. languages like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Sam is fantastic with languages. Mm -hmm. He knows like at least four or five. Yeah, least four, yeah. <laughs> so if you, if you need to uh, prayer um, and you only speak German, uh, Pastor I'll Sam is <laughs> still. Uh, but uh, basically everyone's hearing um, the message. Amen. And I don't know if 
all of Peter's sermon there was mm -hmm. translated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, now you think of the evangelistic series where the pastor speaks in in English and then the translator speaks in, you know, French or whatever the language uh -huh. is. And but you have this beautiful, beautiful message mm -hmm. about the crucified and risen Savior, mm. and what is the the conclusion of this aspect here in verse uh, 41? In verse 41, let's read it together. Actually, let's start in verse, uh, uh, let's wrap this section up sure. from verse 38. Okay. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And it says in verse 41, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. Amen. And that day about 3,000 souls the Lord. were added to them. Amen. We don't know the number before, mm -hmm. but 3,000 is a significant number. That's true. And we know that there were 120 people in that upper room. Yeah. And there are probably other believers too. But to add that many. So maybe they had 400, maybe. And then 3,000, that's 3,400 believers right there. Amen. It's Which you can see why the church faced challenges later. Because um, there was this whole new aspect and there was some tension and we'll get into more details mm -hmm. later but it was a beautiful picture beautiful, a beautiful picture, picture of the early church united sharing with one another praying with one another working together with the holy spirit there was perfect we could call it as perfect as it gets um unity mm -hmm. And, and that was beautiful, even though they were coming, like you mentioned, from different cultures, different languages. Um, there is this, this sense of, of brotherhood, sisterhood, familyhood, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody really liked each other. They, they sensed that, that, that they had something good to share. And they were sharing it through their actions. I like this quote here mm -hmm. on the last day's lesson. I'm not reading both of the quotes, okay. so you're going to have to follow the PDF mm -hmm. link to the lesson to read the other one. But it says, There can be no growth or fruitfulness in the life that is centered in self. Mm. If you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you are to forget yourself Amen. and try to help others. Amen. Talk of the love of Christ. Tell others of his self-sacrificing death in their behalf. Mm -hmm. As you receive the Spirit of Christ, the spirit of unselfish love and labor for others, you will grow and bring forth fruit. Amen. Your faith will increase, your convictions deepen, your love be made perfect. Amen. Power. And then you multiply that by the group sum, not just individual, mm -hmm. then you can see how the wildfire starts. You can not see that. And, and I think the beautiful part is that you and us as well, we we're all invited to um, share good news. Amen. Could you close this? I'll be glad to. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to, again, um, just take the time to understand these words that we've read in your word and, and to put them into practice in seeking you through prayer and seeking you through the study of your word and in also seeking you as we share with one another the things that you have done for each one of us. Amen. And we give you the praise and the glory for all the good things that happened. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you want to check out the next element mm -hmm. in the course of missions, check back with us next week, same time, right before church. Amen. So happy Sabbath. Take care. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want the notifications when we go live. Take care and happy Sabbath.